Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on our website or our channel. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Today, we're discussing the subtlest of the three precious metal strap-clad Rolex Daytonas launched at Basel World 2017. This is the Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona 116519LN, 40 millimeters in white gold with ceramic bezel. The watch measures 12.2 millimeters thick from lug to lug, 47.7 millimeters, and 20 millimeters between the lugs. On the Oyster Flex strap bracelet, and it is both strap and bracelet, you can see that the watch wears easily on my wrist. Comfortable, relatively short across the wrist, low enough to fit underneath any cuff. It is a dress watch, but it's also a sports watch. And the timepiece is small enough that I would say you could probably wear it on a wrist as small as 13 to 13 and a half centimeters circumference. And that's in large part due to the fact that there is no integrated solid end link here. It's a strap that pulls straight down. Well, let's take a look at the hardware and the software, because calling this a strap isn't quite fair. There's metal inside the Oyster Flex strap bracelet, and as you can see, that's no nickname. It is called Oyster Flex. It has the look of an integrated bracelet, so that should be your first cue that there's something else going on here. It's vulcanized rubber wrapped around a titanium alloy core, so you can never cut through it or tear it. That's one of the reasons several different sizes are made. There's also a bellows system on the underside to help you find that last bit of cinching tightness and security on the wrist. It's more of a spring system for setting the strap secure on the wrist. You can see the clasp is gray gold like the watch, and like the watch, it's made by Rolex. We'll talk about what gray gold is in a moment, but first, take note that internally, it features the five millimeter easy link, quick adjustment system, five millimeters in, five millimeters out, no use for tools there, that can be done manually. There is a polished internal, because this is a flagship watch, so it's not media blasted or rough inside. There is a beacon to hook system internally, so the lift lock latches first, and then the clamshell latches. There's a kerf underneath the crown, so you can lift up that clamshell lock, and note that there are still some packing stickers on this one, so it's remarkably fresh. The timepiece features a case made of gray gold, and let's talk about what that is. Rolex makes its own gold. It smelts its own, it has its own foundry, it makes its own cases. Gray gold is white gold, 18 karat, with a higher proportion of white metal elements, so that it doesn't need to be, for example, rhodium plated like cheap, milky, yellow white gold. So it appears as what you would expect white gold is. It's white on the outside, and if you scratch it, it's white underneath. It's still 18 karat white gold, it's just a more sophisticated formulation. Screw down crown, trip lock, and screw down pushers, 100 meters water resistant. You can see the case of the Daytona has always been a little bit sexier than the blockish super case of the dive watches and the GMT, and that continues here. The bezel is ceramic and highly scratch resistant, so it tends to block dents and scratches on the case. The tachymeter is composed of little wells that are then filled with a platinum deposit to create the image of the indices, the scales, and the numerals. And you can use that in conjunction with the chronograph to gauge, for example, the speed of a car over a mile or a kilometer. The dial is a lovely sort of, I would almost call it somewhere between gray and anthracite. It is much darker than silver, but it's not quite it's not quite anthracite, that blackish gray metallic tone. Consider it silver with balls. White gold hands, white gold indices, white gold Rolex coronet. You have sunken registers, each one in black with polished chapter rings. It's a handsome finish. There is a set of baton style hands at center and a black polished chronograph seconds hand. The watch does feature a chronograph. It's long been known that the Daytona is motorsports associated and motorsports adjacent in the Rolex marketing universe and of course it is the winner's gift at the annual 24 hours of Daytona sports car race. Column wheel for crisp actuation and a vertical clutch so the second hand doesn't jump into action. The vertical clutch also allows you to leave the chronograph running with no additional wear and tear or risk to the movement. Now the movement is Rolex manufactured caliber 4130 introduced back in 2000. There have been some changes to upgrade the movement over the years, but the basic things have stayed the same. 
Automatic winding, three-day power reserve, a rotor bearing instead of a jeweled staff for better shock resistance, chronometer certified, 44 pivot jewels. Rolex further goes beyond and assures that the watch will run beyond chronometer standards. COSC is minus four plus six for 24 hours. Rolex's standard is minus two plus two or better for 24 hours, so it meets that standard. It has a full balance bridge and a free sprung index for a better shock resistance and a handmade brigade overcoil hairspring, the better to help it keep consistent time in any orientation and earn that chronometer certification. The hairspring is made of a blue oxidized niobium zirconium alloy Rolex calls parachrome blue, so it's also a highly anti-magnetic watch. Shock resistant, water resistant, and anti-magnetic. And of course, the timepiece is remarkably svelte for what sits within and heavier than you suspect due to the solid gold case back rather than a cheaper and lighter sapphire display. Reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. We're back with the Daytona by night. I should also mention the movement features hacking or stop seconds.